Today we're looking at the Narwhal Nautilus, a medium-large piston filler pin manufactured in China. I see a lot of different colors and materials crop up for this pin, often in very limited runs. Currently, prices range from about 130 US dollars for a steel nib up through 315 for a 14K gold nib. I've somehow managed to collect four different models of this pin without really meaning to, and I've had to stop myself from buying more. Both the body and cap are straight and have no taper, smooth cylinders terminating with a half spherical end. Uh, the top of the cap has a small metal finial in a matching finish to the cap band and clip. Currently, all the models I have of this pen are made with opaque materials, but ink is visible even when capped via either a clear section or a set of three portholes. I've seen models that appear to be translucent, for example, the Year of the Rabbit Special Edition, which took quite a bit of willpower not to purchase. Scroll work on the cap band and nib that looks to be sort of nautical themed. The fit and finish are quite good. Uh, all the details hold up, and Narwhal has obviously paid a lot of attention to the overall quality. Some of the earlier reviews I read mentioned problems with the finish, um, especially the around the portholes, but I haven't encountered any of that. The body is well polished without any uh, mold marks or manufacturing marks of any sort. It's just a very smooth, polished pin. This pin is slightly larger than your average modern pin. Uh, for reference, I wear a men's large glove. Uh, the cap doesn't post, but the pin body is large enough to be comfortable unposted, but not so large that it's unwieldy for smaller hands. Like here it is in my wife's hand, and you can see that she's able to use it without any problem. The weight of the pin is solid without being heavy. It feels like it has metal internals, which give it a pleasant weight. Uh, we'll take a look at that later in the video. When I show size comparisons also later, you'll see that even though it's not significantly larger than, say, the Twisby Vax 700 or Lamy Safari, the weight and balance make it feel like a more substantial pin. The Pelican M800 is probably the closest in comparison in terms of feel, which isn't a surprise given the Pelican also is a piston filler with metal internals. Three of my pins have stainless steel nibs, which are manufactured in-house by Narwhal. The fourth pin, my first Nautilus, has a gold nib, which was not manufactured in-house. Uh, I'm not sure who manufactured it, but you can see that it has a laser etched narwhal rather than the stamped narwhal and scroll work of the stainless nibs. From what I've heard and seen, if you were to buy a gold narwhal today, it would be manufactured in-house and would have similar scroll work to the stainless steel, which is nice because I, I think it does look very nice. The stainless nibs are of good quality, well-made and smooth right out of the box. I find the size of the nib to match Western standards. Uh, you know, medium is what you expect. The nib on my latest pin, a broad, came with a slightly misaligned tine. Uh, wasn't hard to straighten. The gold nib, ostensibly a medium, but honestly more like a broad, was smooth and wet out of the box, but I purchased it from nibs.com, and they do a complimentary tune of each pin before it goes out the door. I highly recommend them, by the way, uh, especially if you're buying an expensive pin from a brand that has issues sometimes. Uh, Visconti and ASC come to mind. I'm not affiliated with them. I, I just am a happy customer, and I've been using them for over a decade now. In hand, the pin is very comfortable. The grip is appropriately sized for the pin, and the threads are unobtrusive. The piston mechanism gives a hefty amount of ink capacity. Uh, for my hand, the balance, weight, and grip overall combine to make this pin among my favorites when I know I'm going to be writing for a while. Now for some size comparisons to common pins. The Lamy Safari, the Twisby Vax 700R, the Twisby Eco, and finally the aforementioned Pelican M800. 
And now let's take a look uncapped in a different order because they were rolling around my desk. Like many other pins with integral filling mechanisms, the internals of this pin are available by unscrewing the back cap to expose a flat area, then grabbing onto that with a special wrench in order to twist out the mechanism. Twisby piston fillers come with this nice metal wrench, or at least they have in the past. I've gotten some plastic ones recently. I don't know if that's just because I bought a uh, more entry-level pin or whether they switch to these universally. Uh, but anyway, I have a bunch of these wrenches. They work great for Twisby, naturally, uh, but they also will work for several of the Pelicans and the Pilot Custom 823. However, for the Nautilus, it's just a hair too small few seconds with a file or some sandpaper opens it up just enough to fit. All you need to do is reach in there and grab the flats on the back and then turn the pin to open it up. It takes quite a few turns, uh, the threads are very very fine, but then just everything pops out. Uh, don't do what I did and mess with the piston, uh, that's actually the only finicky part of this. Uh, just kind of leave it wherever it is. Uh, Put everything back together with it extended that much otherwise you're going to be uh, in a nightmare trying to get it to the right place again the nib just pulls right out just grab it and give it a quick yank and there you have it the body of the pin completely open with a clean shot all the way through assembly is mostly straightforward so long as you didn't mess with the piston just put the nib back in and then slowly screw the back back in. I'm showing this for demonstration purposes only. I typically only do this to my pins when I need to relube the piston, which is measured in years, if ever. So in conclusion, if it's not clear, I really like this pin. The stainless nibbed pins offer a solid pin for the money, especially if you find one in a material that speaks to you. The gold nibbed version coming in at over $300 is a little harder to recommend unless, again, there's a particular material that really speaks to you. There are a lot of sailors and pilots that you need to skip over to get to that $300 plus price point. I do compare the gold nib Nautilus to the Pelican M800. In terms of feel, I find them similar, but Pelican's little touches give their pins more elegance, albeit with a price tag roughly 50% more than the Nautilus. On the flip side, Pelican's standard models are a bit boring. I say that as a huge Pelican fanboy, whereas the materials in the Nautilus can be really interesting. Personally, when I buy another one of these pens, and I certainly will, I'll be leaning towards the stainless nibbed versions. Next video, I'll show you how I adjusted the tine of my most recent Nautilus, and what I do to each pen when I get it, to get it running smoothly before I ever ink it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.